greatest highlights over the last 25 years? Well, there's been many of them, Stephen. Uh, one, I think, uh, is North Melbourne's 1975 Premiership, of course, and the development of Waverley. I think it's magnificent. A lot of happy memories certainly come back in the year we won the flag in 62 and 65, particularly a 65 side, which was a magnificent effort to come and win it from fourth place. It was, uh, well, one of the greatest highlights, Steve, of the last 25 years, to my way of thinking, was taking Footscray into the grand final of 1961 uh, when we were defeated by Hawthorne. I was very happy to be there. Graham Arthur of Hawthorne. Graham, your highlight? Oh, the 61 grand final had to be, Stephen. It was a magnificent day and one to remember for many, many years. Jack, your highlight over 25 years? Well, uh, playing in final series and playing in inter interstate sides with some of the people who are here tonight. Undoubtedly, the 71 grand final. Ron, your greatest highlight over 25 years? Very, very hard, but I'm, I'm going for the uh, 70 grand final, Carlton versus Collingwood. John, the greatest highlight over the last 25 years? I think, Stephen, uh, by far the drawn grand final in uh, 1977. Among the distinguished guests here tonight at the Leonda Ballroom in Hawthorne are South Melbourne coach and triple Brownlow medalist Ian Stewart. Graham Arthur, Hawthorne's great half forward and first premiership captain. Collingwood's rug and fullback of the 50s, Jack Hamilton, now BFL general manager. The best player in Melbourne's 1960 grand final win, John Lord. Former St Kilda captain and 1958 Brownlow medalist, Neil Roberts. Doug Wade, one of two full forwards in history to kick 1,000 goals. Mr Football for nearly 20 years, Ted Whitten. Carlton's great ruckman and premiership captain coach, John Nichols. St Kilda's Lindsay Fox, a battling player who rose to become club president. Richmond's 310-game veteran Jack Dyer, alias Captain Blood. Former Essendon skipper and three times All-Australian centre man Jack Clark. From Western Australia, former North Melbourne champion Barry Cable. Collingwood's 1953 Premiership captain and 250-game veteran Lou Richards. Veteran Victorian defender and former Fitzroy captain coach, Bill Stephen. A member of four premiership sides with Carlton and now captain coach of St Kilda, Alex Jezelenko. Triple Brownlow medalist and former South captain and coach, Bobby Skilton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host this evening for Sevens Hall of Fame. Please welcome Peter Landy. Thank you very much indeed, Don Rainsford, and a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sevens Hall of Fame, coming to you from the Leander Ballroom in Hawthorne. Tonight, we have gathered the greatest players, coaches and administrators of the Victorian Football League to help us celebrate our 25-year involvement with football. Over the next few hours, we'll be looking at the highlights and personalities who've shaped Australia's greatest game since 1956. We've invited our world of sport experts, both past and present, to select their greatest team from that period. And looking around at the champions here tonight, you can imagine just how difficult their task has been. Now, those selected make up Seven's Hall of Fame team, and each member will be presented with a magnificent memento of tonight's function. The 21 inaugural members of Seven's Hall of Fame will each receive a superb gold-plated statuette. The team will comprise a coach, 18 positional selections and, keeping with the trend of modern football, two interchange players. The interchange players being the second highest vote getters. Now as well, we'll have two special awards to make but we're telling you more about that a little bit later on during the program. The statuettes were commissioned especially by Seven and were designed and crafted by Brim Medallions. The trophy represents a modernistic football mark and was designed to stand out for the champions here tonight have certainly filled cabinets with their on-field deeds over the years. Now the task of sifting through the hundreds of fine players uh, that have represented the 12 league clubs over the past 25 years, I'm sure you will agree, was an enormous one. And what better selectors uh, could there be than the experts who have sat in judgment on the World of Sport panel for 22 years. 
Now, last Sunday, the world's longest-running sports show celebrated its 1,000th, 115th performance. And the ex-champions who make up the footy panel are an integral part of the show. Now, no one could have uh, or could have better credentials over the years uh, than the faces have changed, but the balance of experience and wisdom has remained. Brownlow medalists like South's triple winner Bobby Skilton, Neil Roberts and the Baron Alan Ruthven have traded verbal punches with the toughies like Captain Blood Jack Dyer and Lou Richards. There have been goal kickers like Doug Wade and Peter McKenna, coaches and ex-champions like Bob Davis and Jim Francis, young bloods like the 300-game veteran Sam Newman and Richmond's Kevin Sheedy, joined old-timers like Bruce Andrew and gentleman Jim Cleary to Shape Seven's Hall of Fame. And there have been academics like former Collingwood and Hawthorne Rover, the professor, Kevin Coglin, and there's been a ringmaster, of course, in the shape of Seven's veteran sportscaster, Ron Casey. Now, over the past few weeks, they've toiled over their individual teams. For some, it's been perhaps the hardest selection that they've ever had to make. And each of our judges was given a strict proviso that their team was to remain secret and all were asked not to discuss it with the other judges. That perhaps was one of the hardest parts of all. Tonight, you, the viewing public, had the chance to see if your expert selections match those made by our World of Sport panellists. And certainly there have been many thousands upon thousands of entries being sorted out, and we'll be making the announcement of the winner next Sunday on World of Sport. With $50,000 and a brand new Datsun Skyline at stake for anyone who can pick the Hall of Fame team, security has been absolutely essential. Only one man, Seven's program manager Gary Fenton, has the team and we've been forced to profile large numbers of players, just in case. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you a man who has been synonymous with football over the past 25 years. He is also Channel 7's general manager, which you make very welcome, Mr Ron Casey. Thank you, Peter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight on what is going to be a very exciting night indeed. Particularly, I welcome the President of the Victorian Football League, Dr. Alan Aylard, and uh, Mrs. Aylard, Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton, uh, our very close colleagues over a long period at the Victorian Football League, Chairman of the Herald and Weekly Times, Sir Keith McPherson and Lady McPherson, Chairman of Herald Sun Television, Mr Dick Sampson and Mrs Sampson, Presidents of the Victorian Football League Clubs and other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight. Tonight we are on the eve of the 25th year of Channel 7's involvement with VFL football. And what better way to celebrate than with the greatest players of that era. Channel 7's association with the Victorian Football League has been a proud one and has been an unbroken one. It has existed as long as television has been a part of this city. Over the past quarter of a century, football has developed from a great and popular game into one of Australia's most flourishing businesses. And we believe that Channel 7 has played an integral part in the growth of the game. We've invested millions of dollars in it, and over the years we have been proud to create our own milestones. Seven cameras have taken VFL football nationwide to Great Britain and on a regular basis to the United States. Our match of the day this year will be telecast into the far north of Queensland, a new frontier for football. Channel 7, in association with the VFL, was able to provide lighting at VFL Park and eventually Australia now has a truly national night competition, the Escort Cup. And in 1977, another great milestone, while there was 108,000 excited people at the MCG for the grand final, millions more saw the first live television coverage of Australia's greatest sporting spectacle, the grand final. Our telecasts have established a beachhead in Sydney and Brisbane, and we believe the foundation for future VFL growth. Our football programs, incidentally, we believe, have changed the eating habits of this city of ours. On Saturday night, our viewers have dined with Sevens Big League, and for almost 23 years, the World of Sport team has been your guest for Sunday lunch. We've done our bit for the musical world as well with a great football promotion up there, Kazali. And tonight I know you'll excuse us if we indulge ourselves a little with a real down-to-earth hero worship show because we want to recognise the athletes 
who have created so much excitement for so many people over so many years. Our game is a great game and let's think about the association of a great game and a great medium television as we are on the eve of the 25th year of television.